Let's talk about a complicated cutscene from Yakuza 6. At some point in your game, you're going to have to close down the current arc and open up the next arc. And that means closing down all of the existing threads and character motivations and secrets and opening up new character motivations and threads and secrets. This works best if you roll that energy forward, if you can gather energy by closing down the existing secrets and the existing threads, and then immediately put that energy to use for the next chapter. That's exactly what this episode does, so I thought we could go over it. We could talk about one uh, particular way to do this, and it's a very straightforward set of ideas. The approach here, you pull energy from the previous chapter whether that's by pulling it from the energy of a fight you just had, you just were triumphant and you're feeling really good, uh, or it's something you did, like you kicked a lot of ass or did something clever and people are acknowledging that. It could also be energy from things like a personal arc that's getting closed or a thread that's getting tied up or uh, a secret that's been revealed and casts things in a new light. All of those things are references to the chapter before, the arc that currently exists. You close those down, and that gives you this burst of emotion, this burst of energy. Then you immediately invest that energy into the next chapter, whether that's a villain or improving your own sense of, of strength, like making the characters, the main character feel more powerful and more authoritative, uh, or just stabilizing things so that you know exactly where everybody stands at the beginning of the next chapter, and making sure that that new stance is, is useful to you. Whatever the case, you're just closing down things that happened before, gathering up that energy, and putting it into the beginning of the next chapter. Let's see how they do that, and try and try and notice this as it happens. Don't worry if you don't, if you don't quite get it. I'll be walking you through it step by step later. Uh, but if you haven't played Yakuza 6, you're not going to know who any of these characters are. Obviously, this is going to contain some spoilers. Uh, don't worry about it too much. You should still be able to tell what's going on, even if you don't know who these people are. Let's give it a listen. Oh, keep in mind that we're coming in off of a boss fight. We just beat a purple guy down, and uh, we're, we're feeling good. We're feeling hot, because we came in off of that, and we're like, yeah, we're so cool. Now let's take a, let's take a watch. キリオマニキ。いや、てみや。わしゃ、マスドイクの看板上げとるじゃ。嫁連合会の直期じゃ。おい、やるの。マスドイ。よ。嫁連合会が踊れなんぞのために動くか。そこまでの気力か。バカだ
感じが言うなら広瀬一家の始末はもうついとるんで今挨拶だけさせてもらいますわ桐生一馬さん清水の頭何を言うとるんかの兄貴の正体って<笑>松永キリュウさんなんで来よったんですかわしはモレノからデイユに言うたはずじゃそれはあんた勝手なことしよってこれで全部丸くすんだ思うてるんですかあんたは本家の頭に目つけられたんじゃもう何が起きてもおかしくないんでわしの指で済ますときゃよかったんじゃあんたは何も分かっとらん松永ああ全部承知の上だこのバカだりや踊れ、キリュウの兄貴に噛みついとる暇があったら頭下げんか兄貴のおかげで指詰めんで済んだんじゃろうがあ,あ松永の兄貴指詰めんで済んだんすかようそれで勘弁してもらいましたねあ,あでも顔ひでっすよどんだけ殴られたんすかちくしょうこれが本家からの制裁っちゅうわけですかバカたれ松永の顔はわしが殴ったんじゃえはあが頭が何ですかねそれは腰水の手前こうでもせんと指だなんだと言うじゃろうがそうなる前に松永のためを思て殴ったんじゃどう松永えまあいや、まあ、安心してくださいキリラリ松永は見た目ほど痛くないように殴りましたけなんじゃとこのよう言うわ何も加減しとらんじゃろうが何発も何発もうんぴったれが何じゃその態度はこの恩知らずがこの<笑>お親さんえここにおったんですかもういたよずっと喧嘩を積んだんだろえええ There you have it <clears throat> So now we're gonna go over it with a fine toothed comb Sound like fun, let's get started So we already have our first example. This guy in yellow is our friend, and we know that he was in a lot of trouble. He is like a low ranking. He's the lowest ranking of the Yakuza. And he screwed something up. He was given an opportunity to do something, and he screwed it up. But we made it worse. So we know that the main family is、um, planning to punish him, and we don't know exactly how severe that's going to be. And here he is on the ground. We can't see his face. We do see our,、uh, our good friend Nagumo. Crouching over him. But there's this new guy in town. This guy in red. He, we can't really see him. We don't know who he is. There hasn't been anybody in red aside from us so far. So already we know that our, our friend that was in trouble is now down and in pain. And there's this new guy that we've never met before hovering over the scene. We already know. That something bad has happened, and we're already investing energy in this new guy in red, even though this is like a half second long cut. <laughs> Now, obviously, this part gathers up a lot more energy because we are getting to revel. In our victory. Oh, yeah, we, we knocked this boss guy down. We had a cool fight. We totally dominated. We're the best around. 
And now we're being reminded of that because now the villain is cowering in front of us, backing away from us, begging for his life. That's a rush right there. But the hero is never going to be allowed to use that on himself. The hero is never going to be allowed to close the end of a battle down um, because that would involve the hero making a choice. And for some reason, heroes aren't allowed to do that. Instead, the villain will always, you know, do something dumb and fall off the cliff themselves or whatever. So uh, the energy usually gets reinvested some other way. Let's see how our rush ends up paying off. <laughs> Note that we still aren't going to see this guy's face. Because the reveal is the moment when he absorbs the most attention, the most energy. And here it is. There we go. So this nice tight close-up on his face, we reveal it, and we were feeling really good, right? We beat the bad guy, he's begging for his life, and then along comes the new bad guy who talks down to the old bad guy, decides the ending of the fight for us, and just, you know, the monster of the week says that the previous monster of the week was crappy, and you can tell because we are bigger and better and beat him up. It's a classic approach. You make the new villain feel big and strong by making him steal most of the old villain's thunder, which is exactly what happens here. Just keep in mind that that first zoom in on the face, the big reveal of the face, is going to be the moment when we get the biggest investment in this new character. We're supposed to be like, oh, crap. And this guy has a good, oh, crap face. That is, that is a good villain face. Hmm. Great job, guys. That little bit where the guy in purple was like, Ugh. well, that was important too because it shows that the old villain is scared of the new villain. It really helps to establish the new villain's power. The fact that he's on the ground cringing also helps. We got the music sting, really establishing this guy's a villain. Got some good two shots here. Um, we are talking to this villain rather than being talked at or talked down to. We're having a little bit of a conversation. A good tight close up to make sure you know who this guy is and to use up all of that energy at the end of our fight. So now our adrenaline rush has been invested. This is the guy that's our next target, we can already tell. This is a really great idea. Um, it's a very common approach. You don't have the villain announce how important they are, unless you're trying to make the villain seem like a blowhard. The hero announces how nasty the villain is, because we respect the hero. If the hero says the villain is nasty, then that's the villain taking some of the hero's power. That's The, the hero is is saying, oh, this is trouble, and you're supposed to believe it. It's much more powerful than if the villain says, I'm the number two guy in Hiroshima. That's just being a blowhard, right? So here we're going to gather up some more energy. We basically spent our high, so now we're going to get another jolt. Um, these two very low-ranking Yakuza in the background are... They're not our friends. They are... They've been sort of intermittently hanging out with us from time to time but they're they haven't really shown any respect for us so the fact that now they see the debris we left behind and show awe brings up more of a rush it's like yeah we're winning people over are we're, we're doing things we're accomplishing things people are noticing and of course that energy also needs to be reinvested let's take a look <laughs> So here he is. Um, we impressed those guys by beating stuff up, so here he is talking about how he knows he, he knows we can beat stuff up. 
he's not as impressed as everybody else is, and he's been able to track us down, no problem. Now, to be fair, we haven't been hiding. We've been wandering around the town going, my name is Kazuma Kiryu, I'm from Tokyo, uh, let me punch you in the face. Also, have you seen my daughter, this idol? Uh, her name is Haruka, and uh, she quit being an idol to announce that I was her father on stage, and I'm a world-famous Yakuza. It wasn't a big um, accomplishment to hunt us down, but we have been slumming. We've been working with the lowest level Yakuza and resolving threats at that level. Uh, so this is a big fish noticing us now, and he's basically saying, you can't get away with slumming anymore. You're going to have to step up your game, because guess what? I'm here now. No. Now that he's used up that little jolt of adulation, we're going to pull more energy from the existing chapter. We're going to do that by doing a little character reveal. So here we learn that Nagumo knows who we are, and probably has for quite a while. That puts a, a different spin on a lot of the actions he's taken. Over the past two chapters, uh, he has done a lot of things with us. He's fought with us, he's attached himself to us, he's called us brother, he's uh, kind of escorted us around to show us off to people. Uh, and all of that comes into a very different light if he knows who we were. If, if rather than out of respect for what we'd done, it's out of, you know, knowing that escorting around a legendary Yakuza is going to earn him some points or something. <clears throat> so that generates some energy. We're like, seriously? You jerk! I thought that we were friends! Where does that energy go? Right back into the village. So you can see the pattern here. The idea is that every time the villain gets to make a grandstand statement like this, he only does it if he has revealed something beforehand or done something to raise energy. This is a basic idea. You don't make a grandstand statement unless there's energy behind it. And so every single time he's going to make one of these grandstand statements, he reaches out into the past chapter and makes sure to close down a thread or reveal a secret or whatever just to pull that energy forward so that he can make his grandstand statement and absorb it. We're going to see one more example of that as a callback to our fight, the cringing villain. Gotta get enough energy for one last grandstand. That's great. Um, I love this inverted two shot. This is a really great visual. Uh, the fact that we have uh, backlighting on his face is also fantastic. And it's further augmented by the fact that we got the two cringing whiners in the background. This is a really good shot. And it's a great shot to exit on. We've now invested a ton of energy in this new villain. A lot of the stuff from the first chapter and all of the energy from the boss fight have now been moved into this new villain. By the way, I should note, everybody here is from the Yomei Alliance. The Yomei Alliance is like the the uh, Hiroshima version of the Tojo. The Tojo are the, the urban Yakuza who are all slick and refined, and these guys are the small town Yakuza. Notice that all of the big Tojo clan characters in this game wear ties. None of the Yome do. Small detail, I love it. Let's get back into investing energy. It's time for him to walk off. Notice that as he walks off, the cringing villain follows after him and our two buddies, the low level Yakuza buddies, bow. Just more stuff to build him up. Now this part is great. Uh, first off, the framing here is wonderful. I love the slightly off-kilter way that it's framed. The fact that the lighting really works with that building tile. Oh, this is a great shot. This is really a wonderful shot. It's also the end of the threatening portion of our transition. 
We've now closed down the fighting. We've used up all the fight energy. Uh, we've got the villain off stage. It's now time to start resolving the personal conflicts. Let's see where that energy goes. Here he is making it clear that we're transitioning out of the Koshimizu threat time and into the personal time. This lets us change who we're investing in much more straight, much more, much easier. So here we get another character reveal. While we learn that um, that the other guy, I forget his name, the idiot, um, we learn that he's skeezier and weaker than he appeared. He was kind of attaching to us like a limpet. This guy is the opposite. We learn that he was desperately trying to protect us. That's why he told us to stay behind. Um, that's why he tried to keep us out of things. He was trying to make sure that we weren't going to get involved and we weren't going to get hurt. He was accepting it as his mess. This guy's great. And that's something that's going to make us go, aww, and it's going to build up that energy. Where do you think that energy is going to go? Let's see. Straight into the hero. Yeah, that's right. Got to take a little bit for ourselves so that we feel like our hero is bigger and stronger and more reliable for the upcoming chapter. We got a bigger enemy. We should probably have a bigger hero. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. And I'll take all of that emotional energy from closing down the, uh, the, the plot thread and getting the character reveal. I'll take all that energy into, uh, into myself. <laughs> Don't worry, though. Um, a lot of energy is going to be invested into this crowd of guys because these cr this crowd of guys remains important for the rest of the game. So we're going to move them from being a ragtag bunch of nobodies that can't do anything into a fairly coherent team that supports each other. And how are we going to do that? We're going to make sure that everybody so shows support, we're going to make sure everybody's bonded, and we're going to reveal that they protect each other pretty aggressively. Now don't worry too much. I know you've already seen it, so it's not going to be much of a swerve. The main family didn't punish anybody. But here's the thing. Even if they had punished him, we would have to be careful about how we framed this, because we've already walked the villain off stage and changed over into the personal section where we're focusing on our relationship with these five guys. So it makes a lot of sense to make sure that we can pull up that 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 worry, that fear. We can actually hear the music tinkling in the background to, to amplify it. But we've got to make sure that it directs back into the group. It directs safely into the group where uh, it will serve long-term use to show how, how they support each other and how stable they are and how much they've grown. <laughs> See, it's working really well. We've reinvested that into this group. The group is showing that they can, they can work for themselves. They can make sure that the that that they can stand on their own a little bit and resolve things on their own a little bit. They've grown from being completely worthless. Uh, most of them have, unfortunately. The guy in the middle there. Not so much. He is a total waste. We'll talk about that later. Here they are getting into some friendly shaking and headbutting. This is a good level of cool down energy. It's, it's showing that... Uh, uh, you know, things were threatening, but everybody's still playful, everybody's still energetic. And then, of course, 
our main character laughs. Now, watching this alone, it might be strange to see him laugh, but a lot of the previous cutscenes were explicitly about, I didn't show you them, but they were explicitly about the fact that he knows these guys are lying to him, but he likes them. And he was like smiling and laughing in those too. So this laugh is not like uh, out of the blue to us, the player. It might be out of the blue to these people though, um, these low level Yakuza thugs, because they certainly didn't see those scenes. <laughs> so they begin to laugh. And the first time you saw this, I think that the first time I saw it, the laugh felt quite forced. This laugh goes over the top. But here's the thing. This was a huge, tense situation, and it ends with this legendary Yakuza looming over you. Um, and, and you know, you, your secrets have been revealed, and you've shown, you know, how weak you are, and that you're barely able to take care of yourself. And if he laughs, you're gonna laugh, because either you laugh at the boss's jokes, you always laugh with the boss, or the fact that there's, you know now that he's on your side. You know now that he's not going to you know, kill you or rip your pinky off or whatever. He's a, he's a good guy and he's on your side, and that's going to be a tremendous relief. I don't feel like this laughing is too much. It might have felt like too much initially because the power dynamic here it might be a little bit unclear until you remember that Kazuma is a legend. And then here's the final cool off. This is fantastic. So this guy back here is the best character in the game. He also produces the most plot holes, which we'll talk about later, but he is amazing. He was my favorite from the moment he stepped onto screen, and that's primarily because of his voice actor. Um, this is the boss of, of this little group. Uh, in fact, the family is named after him, and I love him. He's just amazing. And in this case, what he does is he does the final wind down and he pacifies the, the you know, he, he makes everything placid. He calms all of the emotions down and he finishes off the investment and he stabilizes the team. Now that isn't the, the end of the chapter. Um, entirely because there's a couple more beats right in fact there's a whole other cutscene that we're not going to go over but now that the cutscene has ended it's ended on a very placid note everything is very stable we know what the future holds we've built ourselves up we've built the enemy up we've built our friends up everything has been uh, rearranged and energy has been reinvested that means that we do have the opportunity to start doing some thinky stuff we can have some calm discussions, and that's exactly what happens next. These people tell us that they, oh, they know who Haruka is. They they knew the moment we showed her the picture because they've been hanging out with her, um, and they all know her very very well, and they know who we are, um, and they know her history, and they know everything about her. So none of them would ever do something stupid, like lure her away to a city and then attack her, and forget that a legendary yakuza is her father. <laughs> We'll get to that later. Anyway, that's what the next beats are. And then they send us off to do a little bit of reconnaissance for the beginning of the next arc. And that is how the arc ends. It's a, it's a really good way to close out the arc. And I know that it's just one approach. And it can feel a little bit strangely formulaic to do things like call back to the previous chapter to call up energy... Uh, and then use that energy to, you know, to stabilize or create new characters or whatever. Uh, it is a little bit formulaic, but it's something that I see a lot, and it works really well. So unless you have a better idea, it seems like it's a really good way to approach things. Let me know what you think, and see you around.